Here are a few useful features that you may not have been aware of that are now present in the Notebook 15 and you also would have had access to if you had Mass Tools previously. When you click on Shapes, um, and let's do the square. If you make a square, you have some options. I'm going to go back to my Select tool so that I can select my shape. And I'm going to select my shape. Once I have my um, arrows um, visible, I can click that arrow and you have some options here. You can show hide vertices, okay? And what you can do with that then is you can adjust the vertices. You can um, show hide the interior angles and they will adjust real time as you adjust your shape. Um, you can show hide the lengths of the sides. So, uh, oops, sorry, I've got to grab a vertice to get that to change. Um, so those are all available for you um, with the drop down arrow there, these right here. You can also divide a shape. So let's grab a brand new shape here. Let's grab a rectangle. Uh, I've got my rectangle. Again, I need to go to my select tool, click on my tool, and if you click the arrow right here, you have divide shape. Now, how many sections do I want it divided into? Let's say five sections. And I'm going to take the show fraction off and I'm going to say okay. So here are my five sections. These five sections now can be moved. Okay, so I can move these around and I can work with them if I'm working on fractions and things like that. Okay, um, they can also be um, They can be selected all together and moved around. You can also lock items in place. So if I had an item that I dragged onto my smart board and I don't want the students to be able to slide it around or move it in any way, uh, I would simply have to do this. So drag my item onto the smart board. Again, use my drop down arrow and I have lock right here. So I can lock in place. So now if the students are coming up and they're trying to maybe drag shapes around, they won't accidentally move my, um, my object that I have placed there. If you want to unlock it, simply click on the object, click the little padlock and click unlock. And finally, if you wanted to um, add a sound to, a, to an item, you can do it like so. So if I typed in Canada here, and it would be nice if I could find a, oh, there, that's perfect, a Canadian flag. Okay, let's say I'm, it's my morning routine and I'm we sing O Canada. You always have this drop down arrow with every object and there is a link to sound. When you click on that, you can find a sound that you have saved on your computer. So if I browse my computer, I know that I have saved on my desktop. I have O Canada saved. So let's find my O Canada. There it is, Canadian Anthem. Click on it and click open. Now it is locating my file. I can decide do I want it to be a corner icon, so there'll be a little icon here of a little um, sound icon, or I can say the entire object, which means I will just click the flag and the sound will start. Then I click attach sound. So now whenever we're ready to sing O Canada, Notice how right now I have an arrow. Once I hover, there's a sound attached, so I click it, and my anthem will start playing. If I click it again, it will pause. And it will start back from where it was. So that's a really cool feature. You can actually also add, if I go back to sound, you can add your own recording. So if I'd rather, I could start a recording, and I could sing, say, it is now time to sing O Canada. Stop my recording. I can give it a custom name and I can preview it if I'd like, but I'm just going to say attach and this time I'll try the corner so you can see the difference. Attach recording and now when I click on the little speaker, So you can see the different options you have there. These are all previously available to you, but I wanted to make sure you're aware that they're there. Thank you.